Hi, and welcome back to the Fracture Rooster Garage. I'm Josh. I'm joined here with JR. We are doing a step two of our EFI swaps. The first step was to get a brand new Holley X-Flow Sniper, and we put it on my 91 Fox body Mustang. Then we took the 4150 Sniper EFI off the Mustang, and we're now putting it on the 33 factory Ford. I'm sorry, I go by, uh, I don't believe in work benches now. <laughs> Working on, our, working on our knees. <laughs> People don't like me sitting on my nice, beautiful floor, enjoying my life. Yeah, hey man, it's your floor. You paid a lot of money for that. You, you <laughs> I, do with it whatever you want. I love sitting on my floor. <laughs> so the 33 Ford ran and drove when it came in, but it didn't run and drive very well. And it had one of the first generations of, of EFI, standalone EFI you could get. It's this old Power Ejection 3 system. I'm not sure who made that, but I know they're no longer in business. I tried to get on their website. Their forms are completely dead. The website won't respond. And everybody on the other websites are saying, throw it in the trash. There's no help for it. There's no saving it. Uh, this, the units that are out there are kind of being parted out to help a guy keep his old unit going. But we're not doing that. We're taking the Sniper EFI off the Mustang and we're going to throw it on here to make it run well because get it self-tuning. I, I know what I'm doing with it and it just works. So here's that 4150 unit that we pulled off the Mustang. And we want to set it onto the small block Chevy that's in the 33 and quickly discovered that it's a dual plane intake, which I have never had good luck running uh, any Holley EFI system on a dual plane. I know, I know it can be done. There's guys out there doing it. I think you just machine this dividing wall a little bit. We did it. We did on your, on your uh, 65 F100. Yeah, um, we just cut this down about uh, that far and zip that out and it, all of a sudden it can kind of act like a single plane. Yeah. It lets the map sensor work right. Right. And that is the issue. If you look at the bottom of the throttle body, you can see right there in the back, on the bottom there, this is where your map sensor ports are at. And uh, if you've got a divider running down the center of that in a big flat triangular partition here, it's going to be blocking the majority of that off. Uh, same with the front. So I think it just, it's better to have the open, the openness of the single plane. It's absolutely right. And this one's about ready to go in. All right. Well, we've done some, some swapping of some accessories here and I think we've got it all set up. Uh, now really the only thing left to do is put some intake gaskets on. What I'm going to do is glue them onto the bottom of the intake manifold and then set it in place and bolt it down to glue them in place. I'm using this Permatex Aviation Forma Gasket. I've never used this specific stuff, but I've used uh, Gasket Tack or something similar before and it's, it's never let me down. All right, I'm just going to smear a little bit on here in key spots to help my gasket stick. That should hold our intake gasket in place uh, while we set it while we set it down on the engine. So we've got the intake all prepped and uh, everything swapped over, and those gaskets are now stuck on there. And I'm letting that stuff set up for a little bit while I'm doing that. I'm going to run a bead of silicone on the front and back of the engine block, and I'm probably going to smear some of these threads as well because these are not blind holes; they go all the way through.
All right, well, the struggles continue. We got all, all the intake bolts finally torqued down. Some were fighters, some were uh, somewhat without a fight. Got some nice squeeze out back here on our RTV bead. I know some of you probably thought that was excessive, but it's I got a perfect squeeze out back there. Same in the front. Okay. Uh, next step is going to be hooking up our thermostat and routing our new heater line. We had to move the heater. We had to move the heater hose circulation from here over to here. So we need to extend our heater hose by about six inches. So I bought 12 full feet to do that. So the vintage air AC and heater box is in the very traditional place right here in the passenger side kick panel, floorboard area. And it uses uh, crimped fittings for the AC lines and just regular barbed or uh, hose clamped fittings for the heater side of everything. So we'll clip off our assortment of zip ties here and uh, probably replace most of these with fresh zero mile units. That's it. I think they're free. <laughs> Look at this zip tie madness. 19 zip ties, 20 zip ties. I'm counting right here. Now we'll pull our hoses out of here. I may as well hook the one from the water pump. So I had to cut the camera off. I butchered my knuckles up pretty good getting that old hose off of the heater core back here. Uh, but first aid has been applied and we are back in business. Let's push our new heater hose on and route it nice and clean like the old one was. All right, those radiator hoses are on and all the hose clamps are cinched down. We'll tighten down our thermostat housing. Okay, nice and tight. So now it's probably time for a distributor, but before we do that, I would like to get in here and really clean up a lot of this, a lot of this wiring, figure out what went where and what we need to get rid of that was, you know, part of the old EFI system, what is part of some of the gauges that are sitting in the floorboard in there, um, and just kind of deconflict what all is what here. So I think we're done for the day. Uh, we'll reconvene on this uh, when we got another full day to devote to pulling all those wires out of here. So see you then. So we left off with, what, an intake bolted on, and we were awaiting the carburetor itself. That's pretty slick, isn't it? I say carburetor, I meant throttle body. As you can see, that throttle body's been installed. So we drove it from JR's shop to, to here and have parked it. It's sat here for, for a couple, couple months now. We were trying to figure out all the wiring woes and nightmares, and it it became it became kind of an ordeal off camera. I'm not a wiring guy, and that's really JR's forte. So uh, he and I pulled some new wires for the Holly, um, cut out a lot of the old stuff from the old per, per power ejection, uh, and getting rid of that power ejection, we found a lot of kind of wiring sins. We sorted a lot of that, cleaned a lot of that up. All right, it runs and it runs well. Check this out, door popper going in. We'll just kind of fall into position here. Throw the key in the fuel pump primes. I just heard a, a priming shot from the injectors. After three months of I'm sitting still. Sounds great. Whoa. What a machine. I 
guess there's just one more thing left to do. Oh. Visibility is not this car's strong suit. I think we'll take the top off later and that should fix fix a lot of problems. Sorry how the video came together. I'm doing the best I can here. We're moving out of the house. We bought another house. We bought some land. We're building a shop and a house there. Um, plus, I've got another house for sale. Like, believe me when I say uh, cars are on the very, very back burner as much as that hurts me because that's my hobby and my passion. We'll get back after it. We'll get caught up once all these houses are sold. We consolidate everything into one 40 acre spot. Uh, we're going to build a big shop, a big, big shop with lifts and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and uh, the videos will start coming weekly, if not a couple times, three times a week. I've got, I don't mean to start watching my clock now, but I've got about three years left in the military. So uh, if I can put out a video once a week until that, until that time happens. Uh, so if I can put out about a video a week until my retirement, I think I'll be happy. And then once I punch from the Air Force, buddy, and then once I punch from the Air Force, we're going to go full-time in cars and traveling and doing all kinds of cool stuff. So please stick with me. I hope you enjoyed something. I hope you learned something. I hope you laughed at least. And uh, if not, man, we'll try to get on the next video. And that's, uh, that's going to be it for the day. Have a good one. And uh, go find something to wrench on. Buy a project. Leave a comment below. I don't know. Tell me what you're working on. I don't know. It's a whole car community. Let's, uh, let's help each other get our projects done. I don't know. I'm rambling now. Uh, but thanks for watching and looking forward to the next video. Bye.